Hello and welcome back to another episode of Divinity Original Sins, uh, the definitive edition. <coughs> My name is Saiken and we're playing on Honor Mode difficulty with um, scaling enemies that are even two levels above us. Last uh, episode we were looking into our party set setup and how to essentially equip everyone before they start to move in. This time we're going to look into the first battles and the strategy of, for this episode will be to fight the battle here, essentially move up to the camp over here and fight the turtles. In On honor mode, even without enemy scaling, you want to take battles that are as easy as possible at the beginning because you're going to struggle quite a bit. Um, and uh, what we're going to learn uh, within this episode is quite a bit of uh, how to set up for a battle properly. Our summoner, for instance, as a preparation for the battle, will pre-summon uh, the summonings. We're also going to encourage everyone, and then Ifan is going to start the fight. Immediately, um, you can see that the enemies have been scaled up. So instead of 30 hit points, we're looking at 150 hit points, uh, plus Spark Striker, which is a really, really nasty buff uh, that you don't uh, want the enemies to have. Uh, Spark Striker means that uh, um, adjacent enemies, uh, adjacent characters will take damage as well. Oh gosh, I wish I would have loaded Fossil Strike on her. Well, too bad now. Well, you know what? What we could do, though, we could use the oil flask. Yep, there we go. Solves the problem. Like I said, you want to be um, very liberal with your consumables. Besides the oil flask, let's uh, set up a totem and uh, start uh, this fight. Both of them are slowed down. It's going to be harder for them to engage us. Uh, we're going to move the Incarnate in <clears throat> because uh, it has a text of opportunity. Ifan here could theoretically uh, deal with both of them and you know what? Might have, uh, might have fact we're going to do that. Um, let's move him to here. And what we can do is we can sprint all the way over here. Unfortunately, the extra attack missed, so we're just going to jump out. That way he's going to take less damage. He only takes one hit. You can immediately see that <clears throat> the scaled up enemies are no joke. They are taking away all of his armor. He says our will uh, best equipped character at the moment. So, gotta be careful here. I'm going to take away all of their armor, and now they can be crowd controlled quite easily. Moving in with uh, Saiken just a bit closer, focusing on one character at a time, or oh, one enemy at a time. In this case, it's the Voidling here. Putting up additional totems, uh, Ifan is going to take care of this vicious Voidling. To make sure that Ifan definitely is not going to die, or giving him some additional armor. I think we already infused the Incarnate, so that was unnecessary, but anyways. Alright, Ifan disables... Um, this one and deals enough damage to almost kill the other one. There we go. One Voidling down. Moving up with the ability points that we got uh, that we've gotten from execution, and let's continue to try to hit the other one.
Good, our range attacks should uh, deal with the incarnate, uh, with the uh, with the last enemy. <clears throat> Two rounds of crowd control are almost too much. We're going to position Ifan here, and let's just kill this guy. There we go. Killed both of them. And uh, that ends the first battle. The face is familiar. What's left of it? Next up, we are going to move um, all the way over to here, to the entrance um, of a hidden, quote unquote, hidden area. All right, by arriving here um, with enough wits, we're being able to locate the hidden compartment here and got ourselves a nice little leather armor uh, plus a, cha um, a leather shirt, so some armor for Seville, and also an option to, use, uh, to poison this unique bow Good. By moving through the cover of leaves, we reveal the hidden area or hidden enclave. Um, you can see this is the area where you find Fane. We're not going to use him, so there is no real need to talk to him. Um, undeads are good, don't get me wrong. It can incre be incredibly helpful as party members, but we simply don't uh, need him. We're going to go with a two human, two elf party. Uh, since we killed that these strong enemies, we immediately got another level up. All of the strategies that I'm showing you do not require <coughs> you to level up, but I might as well um, show you how you would continue to uh, level up the character. So, Ethan here. We're going to level up one point in Constitution so he can wear heavier shields. The heavier shields have a requirement of Constitution 11. Other than that, he's continuing to get uh, finesse. Um, he so far had Polymorph, Warfare and Scandrel. Very soon we, we will get improved skills. Uh, the, therefore, it's important to get level 2 in Warfare and Polymorph, specifically Scandrel, um, could be helpful as well, but specifically those two. And we need more skills on him, so he's going to get Mnemonic uh, next. As skills that we can um, or should put onto him, I want to put Battle Stomp onto him, Chloroform, very helpful uh, skill. And it's either Tentacle Lash for Atropy and some ranged uh, damage, or Adrenaline. Um, adrenaline is super helpful when you really, really need ability points. Uh, for now, we're going with um, Chloroform uh, and Tentacle Lash. So, the way I, that I like to set the things up is just like this here. Chloroform is one of his... Um, Disablers that does not require uh, you to deal physical damage beforehand. It's resisted by magical means So that's why I put it here. Everything else is resisted by physical means and his main um, uh, Job will be to make sure that no one else can act. Okay next up Losa um, Losa already got enough uh, wits to see everything. Her memory is fine for now, so we're going to increase intelligence. Um, we're increasing Hydro to level 2. Next up, we're going to go with Geomancy to level 2. There is no point for us to currently uh, rush summoning, um, as usually you're on, uh, if you're not playing um, with uh, Lone Wolf, Act 1 will not give you enough experience 
to go all the way um, up uh, to level 9. Um, as for her second ability be besides Mnemonic, we're going to go with Elemental Affinity, uh, specifically for the Frost skills that she's going to get uh, that's going to be helpful. Psycan um, is going to continue one point in Intelligence, but also one point in Memory. Um, we're going to increase um, his Pyromancy skill, soon also the Geomancy skills. Um, very soon um, we will get the higher level skills. He has Elemental Affinity already, um, and uh, there are two options. Far Up Man is definitely a, a very good option, but I'm going to go for Monic for now uh, to get a broader set of skills. Um, for both of them, I should also load the additional uh, skills. Uh, Lowe's is fine with hers. That's uh, a really decent loadout. For Saiken, um, we uh, will get Haste. Um, we will get uh, Poison Dart as a single, um, uh, a single target damage. Uh, we could get Peace of Mind, which is actually not a bad uh, skill, but since we uh, since we do have um, uh, necromancy uh, through our item, might as well get Mosquito Swarm. Very helpful ability as well as Bloated Corpse, um, which again, both of them are physical damage, uh, but they are quite helpful both for sustainability, because this here allows him um, to heal, but also for uh, putting another body on the... Um, on the playing field. Good. We loaded all of his skills. Um, now, last character, uh, pretty straightforward. Um, we're increasing finesse uh, with her. <coughs> we're increasing warfare. Soon also Huntsman level 2. And after Executioner, we're going to go for Hothead. There is an option to also go for Glass Cannon, um, but uh, we don't need that yet. And specifically, if uh, you are playing either on um, on the enemy scaling a random buff um, a difficulty, or if you're new to Tactician slash Honor mode, you might not want to go for Glass Cannon right away. It is a good skill, though. I'm not going to a lie. Um, it's actually a really good um, talent. So let's set up for the combat, and I'm going to show you just how I'm uh, usually doing that. First things first, everyone's being de-chained. Gosh, difficult. Um, so what you want to do in most of the fights is you want to use high ground and leverage it as much as possible. You also want to spread out so that any form of AoE attack is not going to hit you. Um, good. So that would be a position that I would recommend in terms of um, in terms of fighting. Going to put some water on the ground. I'll show you just in a bit why we are doing that. Um, let's pre summon. And we're going to use the summoning. To start the combat. Good. What you can see is that essentially Ifan is the only one in combat, um, uh, which oh, holy moly, which can be seen um, over here. I completely misclicked, um, which means everyone else is outside of combat. One of the things uh, that you should know uh, for being outside of combat is you can buff characters that are inside of combat uh, without getting into combat yourself. And no, it's not a bug, it's an intended feature. Um, 
they haven't even removed it uh, with the definitive edition. So as long as you're simply buffing, nothing really uh, will happen. So one after the other, uh, we're now going to not only buff uh, the uh, the character. Uh, by the way, uh, clear mind, uh, physical and magical armor works. Haste does not work. It gets you into combat. So. What we're instead going to do is we're uh, pre-hasting ourselves and we're essentially starting combat. There we go. So Saiken is now in combat as well. Losa, still out of combat, uh, can use her remaining uh, skills to also buff him. And you might think it's over the top. Um, for normal um, honor mode, it certainly is. I wouldn't um, recommend you to, to do that. Uh, however, uh, for uh, this mode here, it is certainly not over the top. I can reassure you that um, it's quite likely that we're um, almost getting one shot. And in order to prevent that, I'm making sure that everyone is well buffed. All right, Losa takes some um, elemental arrows here. And not Losa, Seville, sorry. And she begins to get into combat as well. Losa is still out of combat and I intend to keep her that way for now. There we go. Everyone's pretty much buffed up. And we can join the actual fight. The incarnate moves back. And well, now you can see why we are doing that. Uh, the incarnate, by the way, uh, took a sizable amount of uh, uh, damage. So, Ifan here shouldn't uh, stand too far in the front. Matter of fact, what I want to do with him is we're going to move quite a bit back. Wait a second. Yeah, that turtle doesn't have magical armor. Well, that's a pity. I retract my previous statement. Ifan instead is going to go in and is crowd controlling it. Turtle is uh, now asleep and we can get back out of here. You can see the amount of damage that they are doing, although I pre-buffed with uh, Frost Shield. Uh, essentially what they did is they immediately took the shield off of Seville. So Lozu, who is still out of combat, uh, continues uh, to reapply uh, that shield. I won't keep her uh, out of combat for the entirety uh, of the fight, um, because I don't want it to be considered um, uh, lame or cheating. So instead, we might uh, join with her as well, so let's get a totem down here. That way, Losa joins the fight. So now we have a regular, uh, a regular battle. You could keep her back here and always rebuff uh, the the back line. That's entirely possible. Good. Let's start with taking away the physical armor. Let's furthermore create blood on the ground, making a mosquito swarm incredibly cheap. The enemy is now bleeding. And it is poisoned on top of it. I think we have no target for bloated corpse. There we go, it's almost down.
I am not going to do... Well, I am going to kill it. I wanted to leave it for someone with Executioner, but doesn't matter really. Alright, the Incarnate is down, which is unfortunate. But we can always resummon a new one. And whilst we're at it, let's get a new totem. I think the turtles were a weak against fire, right? Yeah, fire minus 15%. So, that'll deal additional damage to him. We want to get rid of their physical armor so that we can crowd control them better. So, I might put some more physical totems up. But luckily for us... This guy here decided to join us right away. And unfortunately we couldn't knock him down, which is too bad. The knockdown would have been a crowd, uh, the crowd control that we've been looking for. No problem. We'll get it eventually. So, let's start with summoning a bloated corpse. Continue with uh, dealing a lot of damage to this guy. And deal even more damage to him. Yep, there we go. That should kill him. Nice. Unfortunately, this guy had Corpse Explosion, taking Ethan down to critical levels. It's definitely not... Uh, that was definitely not expected, but that's what you get uh, from random buffs, right? So, let's heal him. Let's fortify him. Let's frost armor him. And let's buff the incarnate. Alright, question of the day is, should we stay in melee with this guy? And the answer is probably no. So, let's take away some of his armor. Um, we still can't uh, battle stomp him. It will deal too little uh, damage. So, we're instead just going to charge away with the horns. There we go, it's slowed, and we're taking away the remaining uh, physical armor. And that should be it. Very nice. Straightforward fight. Uh, you should have probably as easy of a fight, um, if not even easier. This here is just a starter fight, so if uh, you're going to have problems here, that actually is a bad sign. Uh, we're having a unique, um, a unique wand here, a smoke grenade, which can be helpful, and a lot of trash loot. So there are a few other items here as well. Specifically, this chest. In terms uh, to, uh, in order to get the uh, chest, my recommendation would be uh, simply attack it with a ranged weapon. 
All right, once this is done, you can travel back to the square of Fort Joy, where we're going to pick up the next quest. Our next quest is going to be yet another difficult fight. Um, we are going to have a fight at the beach. So in order to prepare that, move here and get the yarrow flower. You will need it. Afterwards, I suggest you move right over to here, to the beach. And with the yarrow flower in your inventory, talk to Maigo. Hand him the yarrow plant. He will give you a ring that is going to be helpful for you. The ring itself is very, very good because it gives you the ability to heal, uh, even if you don't have the Hydro Sphere. So uh, it's highly recommended to take uh, to use it. But in order to uh, fully utilize its potential, I would go even further and say move up back to the um, to the uh, town square, and then go up here to. Magister Yarrow. You there? Have you seen him? Useless. It is a... She will give you the quest. Me again, unless you have seen him and, you're... and hand her the ring as a proof. You now officially unlock the hero tag. She will immediately r rush uh, towards uh, the beach. Which is going to be your next uh, spot uh, or your next target as well. So go back to the beach and we're going to set up for the next combat there. Alright, back at the beach you will see that she's going to rush to here. And uh, we'll start to talk to him as soon as possible. If you are missing experience, you might uh, want to dig uh, this uh, area here for a secret passageway for some additional experience. We're going to go through the underground tunnel later, so we're not going to do that right away. Um, but if you're close to uh, your level, this here is an excellent opportunity to gain some additional experience. And this is where we are going to leave uh, uh, our episode number three. Uh, next episode, we're going to take a look at how to set up the combat and essentially how to defeat both of them at the same time, regaining our ring and some sweet, sweet experience. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed uh, the guides slash playthrough of Divinity uh, Original Sins 2 Definitive Edition, consider subscribing and leaving a comment down below. I'll see you in the next run. Bye-bye.